My name is Tom Romito. I'm a facilitator and I help organizations that want to grow to survive and thrive in today's competitive economy. During the period 2003 to 2014, I, I was the president of the Western Cuyahoga Audubon Society located on the, on the west side of Cleveland. And I was in the Audubon Society because I'm passionate about the environment and the role of the Audubon in the preservation of habitat for birds and other wildlife. Now our Audubon Society developed a flagship program called the Important Bird Area Surveys in the Rocky River Valley. As president in 2005, I instigated this project because I wanted our society to have a conservation project. And I was able to marshal about 30 volunteers from the society to participate in this five-year breeding bird survey in the Rocky River watershed. It involved uh, testing, training, and leadership. We, we launched the project in coordination with the Cleveland Metro Parks began in the year 2006. By the year 2008, this project had gained some notoriety in Greater Cleveland because it was something new and different that Audubon Society was doing. And one person whose attention this project caught was Stan Searles. My friend Stan Searles I was working at the zoo at the time and stands with me now and he instigated a, a, a partnership uh, project, a supporting project with us that helped us to raise funds. And Stan, would you please explain what this project was? Well, sure. Uh, in this Rocky River Important Bird Area Program, one of the things we really needed to do was to get the public involved and interested. Most people don't know what an important bird area is or even know why they should care. So early on, I had the idea of walking the length of the important bird area, which was about 33 miles from Hinckley, Ohio, to the Rocky River Marina, walking the length of it um, on a Saturday for, for the purposes of raising funds to help support the conservation work, and also to get the word out. This is something people would talk about. If they hear someone's going to be walking 32 miles for something, people will ask why, what is it? Many people would help us and walk with us. Many people would meet us five miles from the finish line and finish. One of the key components was getting people to financially support those that were walking. At the same time, the Audubon Society had a number of individuals that were birding in the important bird area. They were being supported by people who were donating money for every bird species they would find. Doing these two things in conjunction, we were able to raise a lot of money to support the conservation work, but probably as importantly, if not more so, we got the word out. We got people talking about it. We got people asking about it. And for any conservation program, that is key. And we were very successful, and hopefully these kinds of programs will continue in the future. Stan, thanks very much for explaining the nature of the Ultra Walk. Um, I participated in the ultra walk, as you know. I walked many miles alongside you, and you make it sound so easy, Stan. But I want my our, our listening audience to know that the ultra walk was not for the faint of heart. Uh, when I first uh, did my ultra walk, probably at 07 or 08, I couldn't complete the whole thing because I wasn't physically prepared. I had to train. Uh, in fact, I trained for a couple of years before I actually made the full length. Um, would you uh, take a few moments and describe what it was like to go the full length of the watershed with a small group of people? How did you motivate us to keep going? Uh, can you tell us about that? Probably the easiest way is generally I was one of the oldest ones walking, and I would make fun of anyone who dared to drop out before me. That generally worked. Um, what I would do is 
two, three weeks, two or three weeks before the walk, I would start walking during the day. I start would do a three mile walk, a five mile walk. Um, once or twice, I would do like a 15 or 16 mile walk. Not so much to get in shape because what we found out was that when you walk 32 miles in 11 hour time period, what's affected the most is not your knees and not your back, it's the condition of your feet. And generally if people dropped out, it was from blisters or sore feet. And so I guess I was fortunate. I never had that problem. Uh, the next day I always felt fine. And, and actually um, one of the years I turned 60 during that weekend. And so what I did is I walked 60 miles in two days. And I walked the 30, 32 on Saturday, but I walked 28 the day before. And it, it can be hard, it does take time. Uh, you are tired at the end, but if you're doing it for a reason and doing it for a purpose, that usually gets you through. Well, it sure did, Stan. I, I must say that I was highly motivated because I knew that it was for the good of the Audubon Society and the good of people who care about habitat in the Rocky River watershed. Now, I want to add that after the ultra walk was over, you and I would spend the, the next six or nine months going out into the public talking about this. And we, and we did this primarily to Kiwanis clubs. Over the course of five years, I addressed uh, 25 different Kiwanis clubs and you joined me in a lot of those where we talked to the, the attendees at the Kiwanis about why we were doing what we were doing, uh, getting donations and getting sponsors to sign up to come with us. And to me, that is what uh, helped the Rocky River Important Bird Area Project to succeed because over the course of five years, Ultra Walk a netted about $1,900 of revenue for Western Cuyahoga, Cuyahoga Audubon Society, which took care of some of our overhead expenses for doing uh, this breeding bird survey. So Stan, I, I, I think that the legacy of what you and I did uh, during this time period, 06 to basically 012 when it was all wrapped up, is that Western Cuyahoga Audubon Society is recognized as a go-to organization by other environmental groups that, that want to know how to, uh, how to publicize what they're trying to do. Uh, and I always tell them when, when, I, when I address groups that you have to have a vision. This was a vision that we, we developed uh, we got people to support and, and that we achieved because it was so important to nature. Any final comments, Steve? Uh, uh, Stan? Uh, all that's, I agree with all that, and, and fundraising is critical. Certainly, it costs money to do conservation work, but as you mentioned, the key thing is getting the public involved, getting people aware. Most people don't know what an important bird area is um, on the whole issue of climate change. Most people just really don't know anything about it. They have to be made aware. Generally, people don't want to do harmful things to where they live. They don't want to do harmful things in their community. They have to be taught and people have to connect to what is harmful and what is beneficial. Generally, people will do that. And so our job is more as much environmental educators as it is anything else.